Hey, welcome back to my table. My name is Daniel Stamba. I'm just a guy who's identified how loved and adored I am by God. It is my passion and my purpose in life to help everyone I meet understand their value, their place of worth in the heart of God and in his kingdom. One of the ways God's allowed me to do that is to write a book called Solomon's Song. It's a 90-day devotional and it's taken entirely out of the Song of Solomon. Every verse and passage is broken down uh, by a contextual bridge to explain the passage, but then also it's broken into a love letter uh, from God to our heart. It's very important that we understand um, just how much God loves us because you can only give away what you understand you have. And most of us, most of us, um, don't give away very much <laughs> because ultimately we accept the level of love we feel we deserve. And most of us walk around because of our um, behavior or accomplishments in the past, good or bad, uh, we tend to adjust in our mind how much love we're actually worth from God. And if we don't see ourselves worthy of much, we don't accept much. And if we don't accept much, we can't give away much at all. So I love it where John, where, where Jesus says, I've loved you, we love because God first loved us. Um, and I just butchered that, but the, the main emphasis is like, hey, I've got this coffee in this mug, I can pour it out because I have coffee to pour out now. There's coffee that's been put into the mug, and God, we're the mug, God's love is coffee, and that's awesome. But now I can give out something because I've had something put in me. And so we're going through day by day. This is day number 23, and the title of our devotional is called It's Only a Season. And it's taken from the passage Song of Solomon, chapter 2. 11 and verse number 13 and we'll read the passage and then explain it and then we'll jump right into the message so it says this for lo the winter is past the rain is over and gone the flowers appear on the earth the time of the singing of birds has come and the voice of the turtle <laughs> is heard in our land every time i read the turtle is heard in our land i'm an 80s kid so i think of the ninja turtles oh cowabunga dude pizza so it's like the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Now I love this, so let me just jump right back, and we'll go back to a couple videos before. When, the, when he knocked on her chamber door, if you remember that, we talked about how anytime God speaks to us in our life, it's an invitation to get to know more about him to understand more about his heart for us. And so when the king came and knocked on her door, it was for a reason. He said, I want you to come with me. There was something he wanted her to see in the kingdom. And anytime God speaks to us, he's looking to invite you and me, um, in, or you and I, into a deeper level of understanding of his heart for him. So it's not one of those things where if God knocks in your heart, you say, I'm not gonna open the door for him, that God just says, well, fine, I'll go, I'll go hang with someone else and I'll put you on the shelf of my Goodwill store for damaged Christians. God doesn't do that. He says, look, um, like Joshua 1, 9, he says, the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou go. Where God told Joshua, look, I want you to cross the Jordan River. I'm going to go with you, or you stay here, and I'm going to stay here with you. Either way, I'll stay here, or I'll be over there with you. The advantage of crossing over when I tell you to cross is that you get to experience something of my kingdom that you would never have had the chance to experience with me had you not crossed when I told you to cross. And so when the king knocked on her door, you know, the bride could have easily said, I'm gonna stay in my bed and we're gonna find out this happens again. And she does stay in her bed. And the king doesn't just write her off, no. He's with her regardless. But there's something he wanted to show her in a particular spot in the kingdom that he wanted to take her to. And it could only be seen for everything that it was during this particular season. Like if she would be there two weeks before, it wouldn't have looked this way. If she was here like a, a month before, two months before, she would not be able to see everything that she is going to see in this spot right now at this time. And I think this is fascinating to me because this kingdom was known uh, frontwards and backwards by Solomon. He asked for wisdom to know how to go in and come out before the people. And he went on this little sabbatical, we find out, and he's as a young king, as a young man, uh, king in training, trying to learn his kingdom. And there's places in the kingdom that Solomon saw that, man, it hit his heart. Have you ever watched a movie and, and or uh, you heard a song and you couldn't wait to share that with someone of value in your life? You're like, man, I, I can't wait for this person. I can't wait to share this song with them. I can't wait for to share this video with them. I can't wait to 
to experience this restaurant with them or this activity with them because I really want to them to be there when they I want to be there for the first time when they see this whether it's um, I went to a, a, a restaurant a Chinese restaurant and I had tea I've never really had tea before at a restaurant the hot tea where they bring the kettle out in these little tiny you know kettle cups and it was the most amazing experience of my life drinking that tea I was like man this is awesome what kind I wrote down I said where can I get this tea at and they well, here's the brand at Walmart that's closest to it and that was like it's not gonna taste as good if it's not from these cast iron kettles and so now I'm on this hunt for a cast iron tasubin it's the Japanese hobnail kettle that <laughs> with the little cups and the hob the little cast iron plate it sits on I want to recreate as much as possible because I really enjoyed it and I was like man thank you for taking me here and showing me this and man it's just those, those places where you're just like man I can't wait to show this I can't wait to experience this with this person and so Solomon grew up thinking about his day where he would have this person of value in his life and he was looking forward to sharing this part of the kingdom with her and man every time that season passed he would see that and he was like oh man it's not the right season yet nope not the right season yet uh, not the right time yet but when she's here she's gonna see it and the day came where he met her and in his mind, he'd already thought about this season. He was already prepared. He, he goes into details. He's like, look, this is the time on earth when the singing of birds has come, the voice of the turtle is heard, the fig tree puts forth the green fig, the vine with the tender grapes give a good smell. It was this awesome time, this moment where it would only happen. He's like, man, I got her to get her to see this. And let me just say this, that Solomon had places in the kingdom that were special to his heart. And he knew the season when it was perfect to display the beauty that those places held. Let's just jump right to the message here. Because there are places in the kingdom of God that God can only take you when the season is just right. Like there are only there are places in God's kingdom with you that he can only take you. There are mountaintops that he can only take you. There's valleys that he can only take you. And there's arbors and there's vineyards and there's meadows and there's different places of rest and places of joy and excitement and places of um, adrenaline rushes that God can only take you in your journey with him when the season is just right. And don't rush seasons. Don't rush. Had she said, take me everywhere in the kingdom, no doubt Solomon would have taken her to the spot. But had she been there two months prior, it would have been not the right season to enjoy everything that that seasonal, that that place held for a season. It would have been, uh, it would, she would not be able to experience the full depth of beauty of the sounds and the fragrances and all of the richness that came from that place had she rushed the seasons. And man, don't rush the seasons with God and if you're in a place that's frustrating because maybe you're not moving in the way that you think you should move let me just say that we um, that uh, that pro that um, preparation time is never wasted time I mean we equate busyness with productivity and if I'm not busy I'm not being productive but the truth is that there are seasons of stillness where he says be still and know that I am we make that to be still and know that I'm God. Let God move in my stay. Yes, I understand that. I believe that. But I believe if you look at the passage, be still and know that I am. I am is God's name. He says, be still and know me. Like there are seasons where you have to be still in order to know God. And you won't be able to experience a depth and a beauty in your relationship with him if you're not in a place where you can effectively listen to it and you shut the distractions and noises off. And he said, look, come away with me because there's all of this stuff is happening and I want you to see it. I dreamt of you seeing this place. And in my mind, I fantasized about the day I would take you here and I would watch your eyes take in the beauty of this place. And I would stand there. You'd be oblivious to me because of the sights and the sounds. And I would just stare at you and, and watch you take all of this in and wonder because I know you'll get the beauty. I know it'll have the same effect on your heart that it does on mine. There are places and times and things that God has led me into with him that I would not have enjoyed going into those places two months prior, three months prior, a year prior. Give God time to direct you into the seasonal sites. So God extends invitations to us to experience those sites with him only 
when our season is right. Everything in your past seasons have prepared you for your present season. I gotta stop and just say that for just a minute. Everything in your past seasons have prepared you for your present seasons. The past seasons for this girl held a time where she was abused and she was abandoned and she was alone. Her past seasons held tears for her, her past seasons held brokenness, her past seasons held rejection. They held wounding, they held hurts. But those seasons prepared her for this one. Had any experience in her life been any different, she would not be standing in this spot with the king of the land. She would not be here looking at him and looking at this area of kingdom and not looking back saying, this, this is my home now, this is my life now. I couldn't have even comprehended this when I was in the vineyard. I couldn't have even comprehended love from someone that came from their heart for me when I was abused. I can't even comprehend what it means to have someone put their arms around me because they want to put their arms around me. I can't understand that. I can't understand somebody caring enough to say, what's wrong? Are you having a good... I can't remember, I can't even comprehend the love that she was experiencing. She was thinking this when she's looking here. And every season prior to that had its place in her story. It was like the chapters in a book, you know, you, you read this and it's like some chapters are good and some chapters are bad and some chapters we wish that maybe we didn't have to read and we never want to read those chapters again, but they've got to be read in the order, they've got to be read in the, in the layout that they have because that's what makes the story, the heroes and the villains, they make the story and if you try to scrub one element out of it, it's not going to set right at all. I, I think of Cinderella. If you read to the part where, you know, she rushed away from the ball and she left the glass slipper and the pumpkin carriage turned back into a pumpkin and the footmen back into mice and, and all the different changes went back and she found herself locked in the tower and you close the book and say, that's it, I'm done with this story. You miss out on the prince following her. How do you find a princess? You follow the footprints. <laughs> That's my daughter's joke. It's really corny. I can't believe I just said that. But you, you'd you miss out on the fact that she got the prince. If you read the Bible and David and Goliath, and Goliath is charging David with the sling, and I'm going to kill you, and you close the book. And, man, that's traumatic because what happened to him? What happened to him? Because all accounts, Goliath should have won that battle. But it's that chapter, that, that part in the story where Goliath threatens him and, and tries to put fear into David that, man, it's that part. It has to be there because you flip over and you find where David looks at Goliath and he says, that's all you're bringing? You're fighting me with a sword and a spear and a shield and, and that's all you're bringing against the God of the universe? You know? <laughs> He's like, what? Hefty, hefty, hefty. He's like, man, that's it? That's what you're challenging God with? Are you insane? You know, you're going to miss that part of it. Man, if you look at Jesus on the cross and he's saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? And you close the book, you miss the part where there's a resurrection. It's part of that story. It's part of that season. has got to be in that story. And your pain has got to be part of your story. It's perfected you. And he's prepared you for this season with God when he says, let me lead you into this uh, aspect of relationship and now stand with me. And look out over your new home. And everything that you went through, it's done. But it's necessary to bring your heart to understand me and to be receptive to me in the way that you understand me and in the way that you're receptive to me because of it. You know, wasted years in our life. You don't have any wasted years. You don't. All those nights that you wish you could take back, man, those were preparing you to understand and desire God's heart. Man, all of the emptiness that I felt when I asked God, would you, man, I, oh, man, all of the emptiness that you feel in life to bring you to the point where you say, God, I need you. I'm hungry for you. Every point of rejection, man, I would gladly take it again. Because it brought me to an understanding of God's heart that has set me free. Set me free. It's ignited me. Boom! Like a flame. Boom! Looks like the Holy Spirit is called dunamis. Man, it's like dynamite. Boom! Everything changed. And dynamite changes a room. And the, the love of God, when it's inside you, understand you. Boom, nothing in that room is the same. It's like something blew up in here. Shazam! 
the barn doors got blown off. You, you see it because it's there. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you with that. Man, there are seasons that are that are for you at a certain time. And man, every season in your life is necessary to bring you to the point where when the king knocks on your heart door and says, come away with me. Come here, babe. I want to show you something. Man, the Holy Spirit says, come with me. I'm going to show you something. Man, I'm ready. I'm going. I don't want to miss this. I want to miss it. Man, it prepares you. So trust him with your present season and let him bring your future to you. Trust him with this season. Are you confused? Are you broken? Are you wounded? Trust him with this season and let him bring your future to you. So here's my question for you. Every day I'm going to ask you a question. What things about your current season do you see that your past has prepared you for? What are some things now, where you're at right now, that you can look back on your life and say, had this been any different, I would not be here. I would not be able to understand God in the way that I understand now. Had this not happened, I needed this and this and this and this and this. I needed those things. I may not have liked them all. I may not have wanted them all. I would maybe have chosen something completely different. But I didn't. I couldn't. But I had them, and I look back and say, yes, they were, without a doubt, necessary for my today. That's your question. Thank you for being with me. That's our devotional today. Join me next time. We're talking about God's safe house. This is one of my favorite passages because it has an electric meaning for me. God's safe house. God is a place for you that's like a safe house. And when you discover it, it's like, ah, I mean, it just, it blows you away. It blew me away. When I, when I saw this passage, I, I got to tell you the story about this passage and how it means what it means to me. Um, when we meet again next time. So God's safe house this day uh, next time we meet today. Thank you very much for joining me for day 23. Have a fantastic day, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.